coming up on today's episode of Airborne on Man. NASA Aeronautics develops multi-rotor test bed. Cannabis company strikes deal for potential drone delivery. And UND UAS degree program reaches 10-year anniversary. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. NASA has developed a flexible way to test new designs for aircraft that use multiple rotors to fly. The multi-rotor test bed will let researchers study a wide variety of rotor configurations for different vehicles, including tilt rotor aircraft, mid-sized drones, and future air taxis. The agency released a video showing the MTB setup in a four-rotor configuration during a recent demonstration inside the U.S. Army 7x10-foot wind tunnel at NASA's Ames Research Center in California's Silicon Valley. While spinning, the rotors move between a forward orientation and an upward one that can simulate vertical takeoff and hovering. The entire structure tilts, mimicking different orientations of an aircraft as it flies. By allowing for these adjustments and measuring the loads on individual rotors, the testbed will provide a wealth of data on the aeromechanics of an array of multi-rotor configurations. Now let's take a quick look at some interesting news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. Altitude Angel has been awarded the contract to provide Netherlands ANSP. Luchtberg here sliding Nederland with its first nationwide UTM platform following an open and competitive tender process. The solution presented by Altitude Angel will provide the Netherlands with a technically advanced nationwide UTM platform. It will be the foundation for safe integration of UAVs and further increase their use in Dutch airspace for years to come. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems has begun a series of demonstration flights using its MQ-9 Guardian remotely piloted aircraft. The flights being hosted by the Hellenic Air Force and staged outside of Larissa Air Base in Greece showcase the maritime surveillance capabilities of the MQ-9 as well as the GAASI developed detect and avoid system. Japan's Terra Drone Corporation signed an investment agreement with Unmanned Aerial Services Incorporated to form a new subsidiary in Canada, Terra Drone Mining. Terra Drone Mining will provide cutting edge unmanned mapping and inspection services to underground mines across the world. Established in 2017, UAS Incorporated counts among its clients some of the world's leading mining companies, including Vail, Newmont Gold Corporation, Barrick Gold, and Glencore. The global agriculture drones market is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 31.1% from 2019 to reach $5.19 billion by 2025. The growth of the agriculture drone market is mainly attributed to the growing population and rising pressure on the global food supply, increase in venture funding for development of agriculture drones, growing e-agriculture, and communication technologies, rising automation in agriculture, growing emphasis on enhancing agriculture efficiency and the rising need for water conservation across the globe. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. A non-binding letter of intent has been signed between GRN Holding Corporation and Squad Drone that will allow the cannabis company to purchase the drone operator. But don't expect drones to be dropping pot at your door. The intent of the deal is to launch a business-to-business -business drone delivery program for hemp and cannabis industries. The drone will be outfitted with a cashless payment system to allow for closed-loop payments on delivery. Thomas Gavin, CEO of Canatrack, said, it is Canatrack's mission to help improve safety across the hemp and cannabis industries. The Drone Cannabis Delivery Partnerships allows us to do exactly that, while simultaneously assisting in revolutionizing policy, technology, efficiency, and cost across the industry. We are so privileged to be a part of this groundbreaking program. Ten years ago, nobody knew how long it would be before the commercial potential of unmanned aircraft systems would be unleashed. 
That didn't stop the University of North Carolina's John D. Odegaard School of Aerospace Sciences from becoming a leader in the field by being the first university to offer a degree program in UAS operations back in 2009. From its start, 225 students have graduated from the university with UAS degrees, and 159 students are currently majoring in the subject. According to Al Palmer, the retired director of UND's Aerospace UAS program, the university began planning its move into UAS in 2005. There was no hesitation about it, Palmer said. Paul Linseth, the current UND Aerospace Dean, said at one of our first meetings that we should be running towards this, not walking. UND Aerospace got involved in UAS before anyone could even spell unmanned aircraft systems. And that's it for this week's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.